right. Is that okay? <clears throat> okay. Uh, magandang hapon po. Good afternoon to all. Thank you for the invitation. And I really, I'm really happy to be and feeling small to be with Xiao and uh, Julius. No, thank you very much for this companionship. And now, um, <clears throat> I'm, I'm a priest, a Catholic priest, and we have so many saints. And I was wondering, there are many patron saints for different kinds of things, but who could be a saint, a canonized saint for whistleblowing and truth telling, especially in the political sphere? I'd like to propose the character of Longinus in the Moriones Festival as a, as a whistleblower. So I start with uh, my short visit, you know, one Holy Week uh, celebration in Buak Marinduque a few years ago. Of course, the celebration there is called festival because the, the tourism and the government uh, offices are generally in charge. So it, there is festive mood even in uh, during Holy Week. So there is a parade of what you call moriones the Roman soldiers, and there is, a, if you notice, uh, there's a much display of great innovation using local materials, even dry leaves, and this turn, <clears throat> dry leaves, and uh, next, and uh, seashells, next, please, seashells, and um, all kinds of things, uh, yung bao, yung nyog, next. And uh, you might be interested that there is also a mask uh, for women, morion, next. Yes. And of course, um, <clears throat> all over the place, you see tarpaulins of mayors and governors greetings. So generally that this festival is a holy sacred festival, but uh, there is mixture of um, the politics, the uh, cultural pres uh, presentations, etc. Now, I, I don't want to burden you with with the history of this, but of course, there was a missionary who introduced the colorful reenactment of the biblical narratives, focusing on the passion narratives, but uh, it, it does not end with Jesus' death. It does not end with, with uh, uh, even the resurrection of Jesus, but with Longinus. Now, <clears throat> let, me, let me go into a public discourse. So there is a, a small museum there, and it tells you the meaning of the, the presentation. So it says, uh, it's... Um, <clears throat> Longinus is a centurion, first century, meaning from the very beginning, he shared time with Jesus. And that's the story of this uh, Roman soldier who pierced the side of Jesus and he became blind. Later on, uh, I think there are three characters lumped together in this character. And the more important thing, I think, is that he was one of the soldiers who was asked to guard the, the tomb so that the fanatics would not be able to steal the body. But when the Roman soldiers reported that the tomb was opened and they could not explain it, they were reprimanded, but they were not uh, jailed or punished. They were bribed. They were bribed and they were told, Psh, don't tell the real story. And... The, most of the soldiers, according to the Gospels, uh, received the bribe. Now, <clears throat> next, please. Now, one of the soldiers there uh, did not accept the bribe, and uh, he is Longinus. Next. <clears throat> so, as you can see, uh, Longinus is just one of the Mar Marions. The Marions are the, the Roman soldiers. And uh, the different actors wear masks, different uh, self-styled masks and vests, playing the role of uh, Roman soldiers who were very cruel to, to Jesus. And one of them 
turn out to be a whistleblower. Next. <clears throat> now, you might say, I asked uh, one of the sisters there, why is it that you don't have a statue here of Longinus? And the sister said, Father, isn't it that it's not really uh, true? It's just a legend. It's not biblical. But I said, you, you know, if you go to Vatican, at the central nave, there is this Bernini, huge and beautiful structure right in front of uh, the main altar. And so he was, he's considered very important. Next. And so the, the general portrayal in public discourse is that of a martyr who is beheaded because he did not obey the local authorities, especially the imperial powers. Now, next, <clears throat> I would like to go into some local understanding. I noticed that there, the Moriones, there were plenty of Moriones, and I noticed that they had organizations like this, uh, Kapatirang Morion. Next. Uh, there's also the Legion. There's another organization of the Moriones the soldiers, and then there's the Mista, Morion headquarters. So what I did was to talk to some of them. And I discovered that uh, for them, going into uh, participating in this is a kind of a spiritual devotion. Uh, but then they also told me the central law, please next, the central role of Longinus. I asked them, okay, you are, there are so many uh, soldiers here. Um, how do you choose which one should play the role of Longinus? And I was told, uh, sir, uh, it's not very simple. The actor who should play the role of Longinus should be pure, should, not be, uh, should be a good husband, a good father. He has a good job. He's not stealing, he's not cheating, he's a man, he should be a man of integrity. Oh, is that so? That's nice. <laughs> and, and so that led me to, to talk to the Are, Mr. Arevalo, who was playing the role of Longinus. And for him, uh, it is a special uh, devotion. And he, he is disciplining himself to live up to the role of Longinus. Next. I also met the mask maker. Uh, he was drunk then. <laughs> and he said, sir, uh, if you notice, the masks are always uh, violent, brutal, cruel. But he said, I hope the people will not see only the, the mien, the, the face emotion uh, of the mask, but the, the inner workings, the dynamics, the conversion happening inside the, those who wear. And of course, I tried next. <clears throat> no, no, no. <laughs> up, up. <clears throat> of course, I tried uh, the mask, and lo and behold, uh, I wore the, ma the, the mask myself. Okay. So I noticed also that in the factory, and uh, in the house of the mask maker, you have the colors of the flag because it, he said, this is also love of country. Next. <clears throat> now, what I'd like to do is. To, 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 to extend my reflection beyond the public discourse by going into the textual source of the celebration, which is next, the, the Passion. Uh, especially because uh, when I attended this uh, Longinus um, pageant, I noticed that the, 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 the dialogues are versified similar to the Passion. And so I realized that the character of the Passion, Longinus, uh, is, is really a, a beautiful text. Next. <clears throat> For example, here. Ngunit yaong si Longinus Kapitan Tim Timang Loob Munti may di nalamuyot Sa pangakot mga handog ni yung mga pariseyos. So the Longinus 
came out, no, shouting that the Jesus is alive, contrary to the the lies uh, proclaimed by the other soldiers. But this Langinus, the captain of your pure heart, was not at all lured by the promises and bribes of the Pharisees. Next, he even turned his back away from earthly pleasures and changed his attitudes. He strongly acknowledged God, the beloved Lord. Next. That is why his answer to the wicked of heart. See the contrast. Even if I die and my life is ended, I will still herald to all. Next. I will broadcast to the great multitude that here in our nation, he whom you have punished has truly risen from the dead. Next. But when he had said this, the good-hearted Longinus became the victim of a traitor who effectively ordered the use of the sword. Next. Longinus was beheaded, and that was the end of this heroic captain. They killed him, Longinus the Brave. You know, uh, if you read the Passion, it has a longer description of Longinus. And I realized that when I was, as a child, I remember reading this, but it did not register. <clears throat> also, uh, in our junior eight, in the early years of my Jesuit uh, studies, uh, I got attracted to this section, but uh, it's only when I engage myself in anti-corruption that uh, I realized here is an icon for uh, religiosity, yes, popular cultural affirmation, yes, but more than that, political uh, spirituality. Next. <clears throat> and so if you're asking for, is there a, a possibility of a political spirituality in religious uh, in popular religiosity, yes. And uh, I would like to point to the character of Longinus. Next. <clears throat> now, Longinus, the soldier serving Imperial Colonial Rome. He was serving, so I'm summarizing now, Imperial and Colonial Rome, but uh, deep within his heart, he was a man of integrity and he found new meaning in life, even to the point of losing his head. Next. <clears throat> and part of that uh, spirituality is being able to risk one's life for the sake of witnessing to the, the truth. Next. <clears throat> so he had the threefold conversion earlier in, uh, because of his blindness and uh, regaining his sight. But again, when he was a witness to the new life in the resurrection. Next. <clears throat> Now, I'd like to extend this even further <clears throat> in contemporary challenges of truth-telling and whistle-blowing. Next. According to this man, he, is, he died recently, thieves reform, but a killer is a killer. Without that. Next. <clears throat> you know, the, the devotion to Longinus has spread to, uh, to Marikina and other parts of Luzon. And in, in a website, next, <clears throat> it says, San Longhino, Pumatay, Nagsisi, Nanalig. You see, there is this uh, conversion part of uh, a man of violence who became uh, a witness to uh, conversion and new life. Now, I'd like, to, I'd like to connect this with contemporary whistleblowers like Matubato. He admitted in the Senate that he was a killer. Uh, from a member of the Davao Dead Squad. <clears throat> and yet, there was conversion in his heart. And so he said, Boy ko, bibigay ko na sa Diyos. There is another one who followed, uh, a policeman. So he's very much like uh, Longinus. He was serving the, the government in, in Davao. He's actually higher than Matobato. He, is, uh, he was actually a designer of the kill. And yet, he, in one holy week, he had a conversion of heart. And he realized he could not stay longer, any minute longer, uh, maintaining his bloody hands. And so, like St. Paul, who was also converted, he said, I'm grateful to Christ Jesus, our Lord, who has strengthened me because he judged me faithful and appointed me, even though I was formerly a blasphemer, a persecutor, and a man of violence. And when I told 
uh, Lascanias about Lascanias about Longinus. He said, "I am like Longinus." So, some bishops have reflected on this. We have been corrupt. We need, we need conversion of heart. It's not happening substantially. And this leads even to Cardinal Tagle admitting that corruption and violence put together really sends the church to soul searching. It's a dagger pointed at our hearts, our Catholic hearts. How come this lifestyle of corruption, including the refusal uh, to live a life of integrity despite our knowledge, this is happening. And maybe at this point, we need to go back to Longinus in our soul searching. And if you want to learn more, uh, actually one chapter of my book, A Hemplo, Spirituality of Shared Integrity in Philippine Church and Society, is dedicated to the spirituality of whistleblowing. And as a matter of fact, I was inspired by Longinus. And uh, if I go to Paete, I'd like to to ask a sculptor there to sculpt a statue for me of Longinus. Uh, the circle there is a film that, where uh, Longinus is also highlighted. So we have some references and uh, maybe I'll stop here. Longinus is an awakener like the cock. So I'll stop here. Um, I hope I have opened uh, a venue that if we are just patient enough as researchers, but also with spirituality, we can affirm that there is political spirituality and liberation even in popular religiosity. Thank you very much. <laughs>